The next model that we will discuss is the spiral model, which was first described by Barry Beam, which is the professor that we interviewed at the beginning of this lesson, in his paper from 1986 that was entitled A Spiral Model of Software Development and Enhancement. And one of the main characteristics of that paper is that it was describing this spiral model using a diagram, which is the one that I'm showing you here. And this diagram has become very, very popular. And you probably saw it either in this form or one of the many variations of the diagram. So I'm not going to discuss all of the details of the spiral model, but I just want to give you an idea of its main characteristics. The spiral model is an incremental risk-oriented life cycle model that has four main phases listed here. Determine objectives, identify and resolve risks, development and tests, and plan the next iteration. A software project will go through these four phases in an iterative way. In the first phase, the requirements will be gathered. In the second phase, the risks and the alternate solutions will be identified and a prototype will be produced. Software and tests for the software are produced in the development and test phase, which is the third step of the process. Finally, in the fourth phase, the output of the project so far is evaluated and the next iteration is planned. So basically what the spiral process prescribes is a way of developing software by going through these phases in an iterative way in which we learn more and more of the software, we identify more and more and account for more and more risks, and we go more and more towards our final solution, our final release. There are several advantages of using a spiral model. The first one is that the extensive risk analysis does reduce the chances of the project to fail. So there is a risk reduction advantage. The second advantage is that functionality can be added at a later phase because of the iterative nature of the process. And finally, software is produced early in the software life cycle. So at any iteration, we have something to show for our development. We don't wait until the end before producing something. And that, of course, has also the advantage that we can get early feedback from the customer about what we produce. The main disadvantages, on the other hand, of the spiral model are that the risk analysis requires a highly specific expertise. And unfortunately, the whole success of the process is highly dependent on risk analysis. So risk analysis has to be done right. And finally, the spiral model is way more complex than other models, like, for example, the waterfall model. And therefore, it can be costly to implement.